And okay, so I'm here back to my roots of starting on YouTube at a women's march once again. Yes, they are still going on despite rape still not being legal in the West. Uh, and this time I'm going to be asking a bit of a different question. Instead of asking about rape culture, instead of asking about feminist values, I'm going to be asking the most difficult would you rather question out there. Would you rather have women's rights or Islam? Let's see how they react. Women's rights or Islam? <laughs> I'm not is that a real question. choice? Is that a real question? Oh, that's ridiculous. No. Why is it ridiculous? I think it's a very serious it's question. There's only two options. Have women's rights or Islam? What? Why is that yeah, even a question? Oh my God. We're not, this is not about Islam. Mate, it but your rights are... Why are you at this rally? Ask that question. Provoking, like, an argument, which there's no point. Why can't we just plan together about feminism instead of you coming along here and starting a religious debate? Because some people, some people believe you should be stoned for the crime of being raped. And if you are protesting rape, you should be protesting the people that want to hurt you for being raped as why, well. Why are you just letting this go pause? Why are you doing this? Why in particular did you use Islam? Because there is a big problem with how women are treated under Islam. Right. So you didn't first ask her whether or not she identifies as a Muslim? No, no, I'm asking feminists. Why are you not asking Muslim women about this? Why are you asking? Well, you don't see a whole lot here, do you? Their husbands probably didn't let them come. Oh my God. Did you just hear what she said to me? She said, I don't see a lot of Muslim women here. Their husbands didn't let them come. Dude, you're doing you're this for- ignorant. No, you she's are doing so it. ignorant. She's doing this for you. Go read the Quran. I've read passages and there's a lot more violence in the Bible and you believe me, I grew up Catholic. Like that's why you see Christians running people over in the streets of London. Right? Oh my fuck! I think that people who say that have probably not actually read the Quran and have just been told that by the media and sucked it in. And I think we should listen to Muslim women instead of white women like me and you. You don't think white women can be Muslim? Yeah, I think they can. But I think we should listen to Muslim women first and foremost. I could maybe I'm a Muslim. Maybe you are. Uh, I'm going. I think we should respect religions. We should respect, respect women's rights. What if religions believe women are worth less than men and should be beaten for the crime of rape? I don't believe that at all. You don't believe they say that? I, I don't believe that should happen. But it's not for me to say what people should believe and not believe. Actually, this is the question I've been asking. Would you rather have women's rights or Islam? I actually, I actually don't have a problem with Islam. I don't see it as being incompatible with women's rights. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I can't walk into the front door of a mosque in Whitechapel. This has come out of women trying to have their own spaces. I agree with if women want their own spaces. And that in a religious context, I guess this would lead to men's spaces and women's spaces. But I don't see that as a, an issue. Women's rights or Islam? Both. Both? You can only pick one, it's a would you rather I don't see what the difference is between the two. Like. There's no difference between Islam and feminism? I, I just don't think that's the kind of question that you can ask people. A lot of people would consider Sharia law antithetical or not compatible with feminism. I just don't think in today's world you can ask people if they would rather women's rights or Islam. Why not? Well, I just don't think it's a very PC question to ask people. Women's rights? Or Islam? I'm not answering. You're not answering? Why not? That, that's not, it's not an either or. Muslim woman. Hi, pleasure to meet I'm you. I'm a Muslim woman. All yeah, right. and I'm here tonight, because this is important to us. What's your name? Arafa. Nice to meet you, Arafa. Nice to meet you. All right, we are asking a question to everyone here. Would you rather have women's rights or Islam? That's not a choice. We can have both, because actually, if you look at the history and the facts, 1,400 years ago, Women in Islam were granted rights that women in the West did not have. What, what about your proper Muhammad, who had an underage wife who he beat? I don't believe that's true. That is true, that is a fact. As a Muslim practicing woman, I'm telling you that's not a fact. I mean, we will put up the facts on the screen here for people and they can read it themselves, but that did happen. So I think you need to look into your religion a little Please more. Please do not tell me what I, as a young Muslim woman of color, need to do about my faith. I don't care what your, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you are. We're talking facts right so now. So would you be asking this to a white Muslim woman as well? Why, absolutely. Be careful with my questions. She was complaining about questions. I don't know. Would you rather have women's rights or Islam? 
Women's rights. Women's rights? Yeah. I wonder why they don't do this in, like, Rotherham. So if you don't get to support the march, then I don't think it's very fair that you're here. We're doing interviews. Yeah, you're asking me no questions. You're asking... How do you know? How do you know that my camera woman is not on no, off? Literally, we will show you. Oh, oh. No, it's, no, a women, it's a women's no, march. There's no men on the march. Why oh, he supports the march? Is that not? Is that a problem? No, on the march. It's not. No, you're supposed to be doing a job. No men on the march. 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 Hello, yes, Lauren Southern arguing with feminists achieves nothing. Why are you arguing with them feminists, Lauren Southern? Why are you even there? Why aren't you concerned with the welfare of the people of this country? Forget the leftist feminists that you're never, ever, ever going to convey. Yeah, you'll agree with that. So why are you there showing the hypocrisy of the left? We already know that. We don't need telling, we don't need time and effort, your time and effort and people's time and effort watching these videos to tell us that we know the hypocrisy of the left. But this is what, this is what our enemies have got us doing, that are either arguing with Muslims on the high street, which is pointless, fighting with leftists, which is point, pointless, and in Lauren Southern's case, arguing with feminist leftists on a Reclaim the Night March which again is pointless and achieves nothing. Now, given Lauren Southern's in the orbit of Tommy Robinson and all the rest of them, you've got to draw an inference. She's probably working with the same people Tommy Robinson is. Yes, probably another one, right? You see, what a lot of people can't understand or don't want to is the forces now waged against us are massive. The spies, there's probably dozens and dozens and dozens of them. Those I've mentioned are probably the tip of the iceberg. We've seen the latest nonsense now with Paul Golding being arrested for allegedly uh, sexually assaulting some woman in a Manchester hotel. That comes conveniently at a time when Britain faced could be riding high with Trump's endorsement. Not literally, but you know what I mean, retweeting the video. Uh, there'd be a, an increased interest in Britain first, so dampen that interest. Obviously, the powers that be have come up with this little stunt now where they're accusing Paul Golding of sexually assaulting this woman in a hotel. He came on to her or something. And again, whatever support Britain first had gained on, on the back of, the, of Trump retweeting the video has now been all undone with this latest nonsense. You see... The woman making the complaint's probably in on it with hope not hate. And all she has to do is make a complaint and the police have to follow it up. They'll interview Golding. Nothing will happen. But yet it's made the papers and the damage is done. Making our movement now more weird looking, odd, dangerous people with dangerous ideas, violent thugs and now sex cases. And this is what they're doing. The enemy is in control of the movement in Britain and probably elsewhere around the world, right, in many places, not everywhere. They don't control the Front National, there's many others they don't, but they're controlling them here in Britain, lock, stock and battle. If it's the National Front, searchlights, hope, not hate, are in control. The Britain First and um, British National Party, they're under the control of the enemy. You see, I make these videos and I've cottoned on now, there's no one to appeal to because the movement's dead. Those that are running the, the movement, the outfits, the Britain First and BMP, they're not listening because they're the enemy. So who am I preaching to? Well, there'll be people listening because I know they are. Obviously, look at uh, the statistics underneath. People do watch, I reckon, a lot more than what YouTube says. But anyway, but no one in a leadership position is listening because... They're the spies, right? The National Front, it's Kevin Bryant, Tony Martin, Chris Jackson. Yeah, he's another one. He's been one for a while. He was always causing trouble in Burnley. And I remember Mark Collick got on him before he'd become a rat's arse about uh, when the um, BMP went all on councillors in Burnley and he come out the council and 
stop them stop any of the candidates talking to the press we don't talk to the press he said why would you do that I was forever down there with Griffin trying to sort out problems he was causing he's another ex-serviceman as well but anyway uh, Britain first obviously that goes without saying you've got uh, Paul Golding Jada Franson the BMP Adam Walker Clive Jefferson you see also what's happened is now Paul Golding, Jada Franson, Tommy Robinson, all the rest of them, and it'll soon be Anne-Marie Waters' as turn. They've taken the place of Adam Walker, Clive Jefferson, Peter Taney, Dawn Charles, and commonly known as Dutch, uh, Butch Dawn, uh, for being arrested. They've just replaced them. Haven't you noticed what's happening? They want the movement associated with weirdness, crackpots, Dangerous people with dangerous ideas, violent thugs, and now in Paul Golding's case, sex cases, right? And this is what's happening with the movement, so there's no one for me to appeal to, sadly, right? It's got to be started all over again, but that can't be done until there's some half-decent money about. Now, it's not here at the moment, but I do believe it will be here. How? When not that sooner rather than later, I don't know. Right, but once the movement is back up and running again, it will just sweep aside all these hope not hate controlled uh, little outfits, right? Because people will see then uh, real British nationalism again, and also how uh, we should uh, operate now in the 21st century as opposed to in the past when you know we, we were we were in, even under Nick Griff with the BMP, as good as that was in the early mid 2000s, right? As good as that was. It's streamlined even better now with the ideas uh, that I've uh, come up with. You know, it's, uh, it'd be better now with all this talking to the public and uh, addressing issues that they face. They're not interested in Save the White Race or Sharia Law. When is Sharia Law coming? Well, exactly. Is it here now? No. Well, they're not interested in honour killing either, right? Who are your family? Why is a white indigenous British family is going to be affected by honour killing? Will no one. Which one of your family is going to be affected by female genital mutilation? Will no one. You know, it, it's that stupid. But our enemies have the movement pushing this because they know it's, it's going nowhere. Same with Anne-Marie Waters. All she's doing is attacking Islam and Muslims. She's not addressing the real concerns, issues, worries and tragedies all people face on a daily basis. And neither is Lawrence Southern uh, on this Reclaim the Night March, wherever it was, London was, whatever, all these leftist feminists debating with them, arguing with them. What for? They're not going to... They're not going to all of a sudden agree with them and come over on our side. So why bother? Well, exactly. Because it achieves nothing, right? All it's doing is keeping us tied up, arguing with the enemy, when the people we should be addressing are our people, the forgotten, beleaguered, white working class, but everyone's forgot about them. But the movement at the moment is out for the count. Richard Edmonds, take note. You're just flogging a dead horse, God bless you, but you are. Uh, it needs to be started again. If John Tyndall was here now, he'd have the balls to stand up and do something. Sadly, Richard Edmund, you don't seem to have any. Okay, thank you.